Welcome back to another episode of Alpine Garage. So we're going to continue to go back to the future and talk about this engine build that we did that we have not released a lot of videos on yet. So we're going to be releasing videos this entire week and it's going to be basically catching up to now. So there's going to be a lot of content. Now we've already done the theories of the head porting that we did here where we talked about we took all the theories that we could find on porting small block Ford heads and put them all into these heads. This video is going to show you the techniques that we used from the standpoint of, you know, tools and, and, you know, stuff like that. It's not a true complete video for porting. You need to probably watch this and go back to the other one. And the name of that video is SBF Porting Theories and put the two together. Here we go. Let's get porting. So today we're going to be porting this head to match this one. Now in a previous video, which I'll put at the end of the video, you can click on that and see, we talked about the theories that we used in order to port this one. As I was porting this, you slowly start to learn the fluid dynamics of the air coming in and you can actually make edits along the way that you think are going to help, which is what we did. Now our whole goal with this porting is not to just like blow out the heads. We're not trying to hog out the bowls or do anything like that. We're simply removing flaws, we're removing edges that are on the inside. We're making just a little bit larger because we're going from a 302 to a 347 so we're going to be pumping more air. And then we're also trying to make the velocities a little bit faster. Alright, so as far as the tools that I used, it's real simple. I bought a $50 burr set off of Amazon and what they are, they're the long shaft burrs that I'm using with a angle die grinder. A lot of videos will tell you to use, you know, small straight die grinders and stuff like that, which is probably true. I had this and so I used this. And this actually worked amazingly well. As you can see, it's already got the paper roll die on it right here. And the paper rolls that I use are from Harbor Freight, which is this pack right here. Cone shape and rolled sanding discs. And then if you look in here, they come from anywhere from 40 to 60 up to 320 for fine. So I've primarily used the 80 and 100 grit versions of this, but there were a couple of times when I tried a 40 just to see if I could cut some more out of it. But a burr works better than that 40 does, so I left it at that. And then I used a 320 uh, grit roll for the exhaust to polish it up a little bit, but I didn't go any further than that. So anyway, I used an angle die grinder. It actually fit the bits really well. This was from Harbor Freight as well. It's a central pneumatic angled die grinder. And then I also, because these things have a tendency to be real touchy, I put a piece of plastic tubing in here. And so what I did was that allows me to kind of feather the throttle just a little bit so that I could go real slow. I can go right it's a lot easier to control that way. So I recommend that. It's just a piece of plastic with some tape around it. The burrs that I got are all long shaft and it comes with two different size cones. As you can see, there are a wide cone and a narrow cone. It comes with a ball and it comes with kind of a square or rectangle bit as well. And I used all of them actually. I used this in the bowls. I used this in on the intake runners. And then I used this primarily for the exhaust and it helped me significantly and actually they were very sharp. This is a cast iron head. Uh, they're plenty sharp for what we're doing. Now this one has the double cut on it which is what you want for cast iron. If you're using, if you're trying to port aluminum heads, the single cut work better. They stay cleaner with aluminum. I also have a rather long mill file here and I've had this for quite a long time. I do know it's true it's, and I use that to file down the compression surface right here to get the squish a little bit more flat which, which helped out a lot because I didn't have these I didn't have these decked so I did it myself right here with this file and then I went and got some Permatex valve grinding compound I've got a performance tool set of small and large lapping sticks some WD-40 or penetrant to get these lock tabs out and then I also used a kind of a flat disc in my angle grinder and that's what I used on cleaning the valves trying not to touch this area right here just to get some of the thicker stuff off of the top of the valve uh, that is anywhere under where it goes into the valve guide I marked that I slid it in there and threw the exhaust and the intake ports on the side 
actually marked where the guide starts and you can usually see it because that's where the burn stops right there but I went ahead and marked it and then anything below that I used a, a fine scotch bright pad flat scratch scotch bright pad on my angle grinder right i got the carbon off at least most of it right there then i took the valve and i put some electrical tape around the top of the valve and i stuck it right inside of the chuck on my drill press and took some scotch bright and lubricant and i literally just sat around the valve for about 15 to 20 minutes each just to get it nice and clean without taking any additional metal off. Some people back cut this valve right here. You can see kind of, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's a little lip right there on the valve surface. I've seen people cut that back. I've also read that this cut right here actually helps deflect the air here instead of having it come straight across to the valve and then down. So I'm going to leave this on there. I'm not going to do anything to that. I don't want to mess with that. But that's kind of the reason why we didn't do any back cutting on the valve. So let's get to porting this head. A good example of the issues with the castings is if you look down here in the intake that right there it's super rough as you can see compared to the rest of the bowl but it goes all the way up the side and around so that's air coming in and being disrupted So you see, we didn't really go through, you know, the exhaust ports and stuff like that. I showed you that kind of in a previous video, but you know, I had the video and I thought it might be good for somebody. So I went ahead and posted it. Now the next videos are going to be on the intake. Now the intake was one of the hardest porting jobs that I did. So this right here, this video is going to be coming out in a couple of days. So make sure you watch that video. We ported this GT40 intake to create more airflow for this 347. Then we're gonna go through how we cleaned the injectors and painted the engine and you know all the accessories that are on it, what's new, what's not, what's reused, that kind of thing, plus the headers that we chose. So those are coming up in videos this week. I'm gonna be pumping them out so you guys can catch up to us now because we're about to put this body on. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.